This is your WCFW Daily News Roundup for 105.7 CFW in Chippewa Falls and 93.5 The Tap in Eau Claire. Civic Media News. I'm Terry Bell. Here's what Wisconsin needs to know. Donald Trump's 34 felony convictions could boost President Biden in the polls. That's according to the Marquette poll from earlier this month. In the guilty scenario, Biden was up by four points. In the not guilty scenario, Trump was up by six points. That was a hypothetical when we asked it. In the next week or two or three, we will see. How badly will Trump's convictions hurt him with voters? Marquette poll director Charles Franklin tells Civic Media, maybe not much. Impeachment didn't move the numbers and the civil cases didn't move the numbers. This one is a different kettle of fish, but let's wait and see before we assume that there will be big movement in the numbers this time. Franklin tells Civic Media the verdict should move more undecided voters than partisans. Meanwhile, Trump is set to be sentenced just four days before the Republican National Convention in Milwaukee in July. It's not clear how it will affect plans. The GOP has been battling the Secret Service over the size of the convention's security zone. Expect First Lady Jill Biden to speak with urgency in Wisconsin tonight, much as she did at a recent campaign stop in Michigan. We have to meet this moment as if our rights are at stake, because they are. As if our democracy is on the line, because it is. Mrs. Biden is set to campaign at Milwaukee's Festa Italiana. Wisconsin National Guard is looking for a new leader. Major General Paul Knapp will resign as adjutant general next week. Governor Evers' office isn't saying why Knapp is stepping down. Knapp has served as the state's National Guard commander for four years. Brigadier General David May will lead the Guard in the meantime. The Milwaukee School District's problems could hurt every other school in Wisconsin. That's according to the State Department of Public Instruction. The agency needs overdue financial information from Milwaukee in order to set state funding for all districts. DPI has been waiting on Milwaukee's report since September. I'm Terry Bell, Civic Media News. Now here's what you need to know closer to home. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. An 81-year-old woman has been found guilty for a 1985 murder that went unsolved for nearly 40 years. A Polk County jury reached the guilty verdict for Mary Jo Bailey on charges of first-degree murder relating to the death of Yvonne Menke in 1985. Bailey and Menke were both dating the same man at the same time. The Polk County District Attorney's Office argued that in addition to motive, they had evidence of boot prints in the snow outside of Menke's apartment, which matched a pair of snow boots seized from Bailey. U.S. Senator Tammy Baldwin was in the Chippewa Valley on Thursday to announce an investigation into inhaler prices. According to Senator Baldwin, the investigation found that the four major pharmaceutical companies that sell inhalers were charging between $200 and $600 for each one. But as a result of the investigation, three of those companies have agreed to cap out-of-pocket costs to $35 per month. She says residents claim they've not followed their doctor's orders because they can't afford the inhalers. Congressman Derek Van Orden was in Osseo on Thursday afternoon to tour a local family farm and discuss the 2024 Farm Bill. The bill was passed by the House Committee on Agriculture just a few days ago and includes provisions like helping formerly incarcerated people get job training, allowing people convicted of drug crimes to get access to SNAP benefits, and expanding access to the programs for college kids. The bill must be completed by September 30th or Congress could vote to extend last year's bill. The Cadot Village Board will consider the sale of its electrical system to the Chippewa Valley Electric Cooperative on Monday night. According to a WQOW report, the village determined that replacing their aging power grid would cost about $7.5 million, which could lead to massive rate increases for residents. Officials from the cooperative say they've been providing maintenance on the grid since 2017 and they are best suited to take over. If the process gets approvals, the final decision could appear on a 2025 ballot referendum. The city of Augusta is looking to raise over $120,000 to renovate and clean out eight parks. Some of the planned projects include renovations at Augusta City, Owls, Millstone, Main Street Gym Playground, Water Street, and Iron Brigade to add things like new basketball courts, trails, and more. City officials say they've already received about $70,000 in donations and are hoping to have a few of the projects completed by the end of the summer. Donations can be made at City Hall. 
A number of Chippewa Valley schools will be receiving funding to replace their current school buses with zero or low emission buses. According to a press release from Senator Tammy Baldwin, four area school districts will receive money for the program. Boyceville Community School District will receive $50,000. Alma School District will receive $345,000. Osseo Fairchild School District will receive $200,000. And the Augusta School District will receive $530,000. A well-known environmentally friendly scuba diver visited Eau Claire this week. According to a WEAU report, Ed Bieber, otherwise known as Ed the Diver, is visiting Eau Claire to pick up trash and other items from some local waterways like the Chippewa River and Lake Altoona. Bieber says he finds all kinds of interesting things in the water like phones and watches, but the main goal of his dives is to encourage others to clean up their own waters. Bieber has also visited Door County and Wisconsin Dells. A new Southport tap room is preparing for its grand opening in Eau Claire. According to a WQOW report, when the Phoenix tap room and kitchen opens in about a month, it will become the largest self-pouring tap room in the Midwest region. Owner Gary Vidland says construction delays had pushed back the official opening date, but they are now preparing for a soft launch event in late June. The new restaurant will feature 72 taps in a yet-to-be-revealed food menu with an indoor seating area and an outdoor patio area. And that's what you need to know. For WCFW News, I'm James Kelly. The Brewers secure first place. Hi, I'm Mike Clemens with sports. The Brewers beating the Cubs yesterday 6-4. to four. Milwaukee now five games ahead of St. Louis in the NL Central Division, five and a half ahead of the Cubs. Backup catcher Gary Sanchez, who hit the go-ahead home run in the game, got off to a slow start this season. Manager Pat Murphy. You know, he came into spring training late. Uh, he was hurt. There was, was all sorts of speculation about, you know, how's that risk going to be and that type of thing. And as it turned out, you know, he didn't get to play a lot in the first 20 games. But since then, he's gotten fairly regular action and he's proven time and time again that he's very very capable nfl the packers wrapping up another week of ota practices number three quarterback michael pratt seventh round pick out of tulane looked impressive passing from the pocket he's competing for the number two spot behind jordan love college football the wisconsin badgers announcing two of their games will be moved to fridays the season opener against western michigan and the annual matchup against minnesota will be on black friday november 29th with sports i'm mike clemens with the 62nd Showbiz Beat. No highly anticipated blockbusters open this week as the box office takes a breath after the holiday weekend. There are, however, several well-reviewed films opening, including The Dead Don't Hurt, written and directed by Viggo Mortensen, who also stars. The film is a Western drama and is reviewing well with critics, including the Capital Times' Rob Thomas. Summer Camp has some serious star power in Diane Keaton, Kathy Bates, and Alfre Woodard, but has not been shown to critics yet, so beware. Also opening is Ezra, starring Bobby Cannaval and Robert De Niro. The film has been described as a heartwarming comedy that is directed by Tony Goldwyn. If you were trying to catch up on blockbusters already released, definitely check out Furiosa and Mad Max Saga, which was number one at the box office last week and drew excellent reviews. Family films The Garfield Movie and If are a big hit with audiences, and if it's more adult comedy you're looking for, you can still check out the film Babes. Vanna White is not ready to retire just because Pat Sajak is hanging it up after 41 years. Sajak's last episode of Wheel will air June 7th. The 67-year-old White says she never would have thought she would have been at the job for 40 years, but loves that she doesn't play a character, is just herself, and gets to give money away. You could try to find something unlikable about Vanna White, but you would not be successful. Jerry Seinfeld cannot stay out of the news lately, but at least he admits he's not a real man. What? You heard it right. Seinfeld says he misses the days of the 60s when there was a hierarchy that started with manly men at the top like JFK, Muhammad Ali, and Sean Connery, who, by the way, openly admitted to slapping multiple women. Nice comp, Jer. Seinfeld says he is not a fan of toxic masculinity and admits he never made it to real man status because he became a comedian, which allowed him to remain childish. (laughs) Yeah, that's why. It's time for one of Pete's picks. If you're looking for something to binge that will make you laugh, I recommend Hacks. I just started season one, which brought the show 32 Emmy nominations and six wins. Gene Smart portrays Deborah Vance, an aging Vegas comic and former TV star whose act needs some new blood, so she is paired with Ava, an entitled young comic who offends people without even trying. You can watch this award-winning show on Max. Ready to dish? There is new information about the failed marriage between Golden Bachelor Jerry Turner and Teresa Nist. At first, it was thought the couple split because neither was willing to move. The Hollywood Reporter says it was really that Turner lied about not dating anyone after his wife passed away in 2018. A woman named Carolyn came forward saying Turner asked her to move in with him but then broke up with her because she gained 10 pounds shortly before a class reunion. So rude. 
Does anyone else find it hard to believe someone who wants reality show attention could be that shallow? <laughs> me neither. For more showbiz fun, tune into Nightlight with me, Pete Schwaba, weeknights from 7 to 9 p.m. on the Civic Media Radio Network. Mostly cloudy with scattered showers and thunderstorms today, especially this afternoon. Our high 72 with wind south at 5 to 10. Tonight, scattered thunderstorms 58. Tomorrow, cloudy with a lingering thunderstorm in the morning, then sunshine in the afternoon with a high of 75. I'm meteorologist Sean Cable. Outside now, it's 58. That's your WCFW and the TAP Daily News Roundup from Civic Media. Subscribe to this podcast on Spotify, Apple, or wherever you find your podcasts. Find more news at WCFW.FM or thetap.FM.